All right. Uh, uh, moving on to um, to Ukraine um, and specifically with the Iranian drones. Can you explain why it is that you and the French believe that um, the Iranian supply of these drones to Russia uh, for use anywhere, obviously, uh, is a violation of UN Security Council 2231? Sure. So uh, as uh, I said yesterday, uh, Iran's supply of uh, these specific types of UAVs uh, to Russia is a violation of UN Security Council Resolution 2231, uh, and it is an uh, issue for the UN Security Council. Uh, the reasoning for that, and as you know, Matt, uh, 2231 uh, remains in effect. Various aspects of it, of course, have phased out, but a specific aspect called Annex B uh, has not. And paragraph four of Annex B uh, has made clear uh, it, its uh, distinct restriction uh, remains in effect. And what that is, is uh, in Annex B, it's laid out uh, that it prohibits the transfer from Iran of all items, materials, equipments, and goods, and technology, uh, unless approved in advance by the UN Security Council on a case-by-case -case basis. Additionally, both uh, of the types of UAVs that uh, we spoke about earlier in the summer that uh, uh, Iran had been provisioning to Russia uh, meet the parameters under Category 2 because they are capable of a range equal to and greater than 300 kilometers. Uh, I would also note that the uh, uh, manufacturer of one of these drones, uh, Hodes Aviation, uh, is subject to the asset freeze provision of paragraph 6 of Annex B uh, to 2231, and all uh, states are required to freeze the funds or financial assets of these designated entities uh, when they're under such restrictions. Okay, so if, if that's the case, why did you not say anything uh, when these same drones were used in Yemen, in Syria, potentially, potentially Libya, uh, dating back to, you know, 18 months ago, at, at the very least. Why, wh why is it now when they're being used in Ukraine that you're saying this is a violation? We would have said they were a violation then, too. Well, you were actually asked in December of 2021, the Saudis ask you, the Israelis ask you, and I believe the Emiratis might have as well, after the first round or one round of, uh, of drone attacks, not just in Yemen, but also inside Saudi and inside the UAE, uh, to, to, to bring this up. And there was silence. So the question is, why now, why not then? This is a repeated pattern of behavior. So I think first and foremost, I'm not going to get into the specifics of the diplomatic engagements uh, that we've had with, with other countries. But what I can say is that the transfer of the specific UAVs by Iran uh, would be a violation of paragraph four of Annex B, whether they were sent to the Houthis, whether they were sent to Russia. Uh, absent advance uh, permission on a case-by-case -case basis by the UN Security Council, this would be a restriction. Uh, and in the case of the transfers, Yemen that you mentioned to the Houthis, these transfers would also have violated uh, Resolution 2264. Uh, and on the topic of Yemen, we are working closely with the UN uh, Yemen Sanctions Committee panel of experts to facilitate their ongoing investigation of prior attacks in and from Yemen uh, with the use of these types of UAVs. Uh, but I'll also note that when we have assessed that Iran has transferred these same types of UAVs in the past, we have informed the UN, as in this case, uh, as it relates to Yemen, but also uh, we have informed the UN about Iran's transfer of the Mohajer 6 UAVs to Ethiopia last summer. Um, I can't speak to any public messaging around that. We, I certainly didn't work here at the time, but this kind of transfer would fall under this restriction and uh, would be subject to it. Okay, well then, you know, that you're making you're making the case now publicly. So why didn't you make the case prior in, in, in the previous cases public? Was it because you still had some hopes for getting a to you know revive or resurrect the the, the JCPOA, or 
But there was something else going on that you didn't think that it was possibly a violation of 2231. Again, I'm not gonna uh, gonna speculate on uh, on on diplomatic engagements. Well, I'm not asking you to speculate. I just want, I want to know why it's a big deal now and it wasn't a big deal then. It was a big deal then, but well, it, it was also a big deal now. Because you just said that you weren't gonna comment on it, it, you, you weren't gonna you, you didn't raise it publicly. As I said, that the assessment of these transfers even back then would have been subject to these restrictions. I can't comment on uh, on 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 previously. But what I would say right now is that, uh, and as I said yesterday, uh, Russia uh, becoming more reliant on a country like Iran, a country known for its destabilizing actions in the region and across the world, should be deeply uh, concerning to the world. And anyone doing business with Iran that could have a link to uh, unmanned uh, aircraft systems or ballistic missiles development uh, it could be very careful in well, their okay. due diligence. Well, that, that, that's a broader point, though, that, that that has to do with your interpretation, your analysis of the Russia running low and, and on its own weapons and needing to rely on what you, you know, uh, Iran or, or, or whoever. My question is specifically, why didn't you make a big deal about this when these same drones were being used to kill civilians in Yemen and in Syria? Again, Matt, I can't speak to uh, I can't speak to whatever decisions we made around then, other than to reiterate, as I just said, that it would be our assessment that these transfers uh, would be problematic and would have fallen under these restrictions back then as well, because these are the same types of UAVs. Mm -hmm. And when we found that, we have raised it appropriately with relevant countries. Well, in fact, but it was raised by the Saudis and, and others back in December of 2021, and and, and nothing was done. Again, Matt, uh, we engage with countries uh, on these very important issues. We don't read out every single one of these engagements. As I've said, we raise these with the United Nations. Right. When I'll, we stop have found... I'll stop after this. What do you raise? What, you raise this with the Security Council now? We we are working with our allies and partners, including at the UN, to address the escalating threats posed by Russia and Iran. Uh, and uh, we'll take appropriate actions as necessary. I'm not okay, and if you were a betting, you. sorry, I said I would stop. This is really the last one. If you were a betting man, well, even if you're not a betting man, uh, you're going to bring this to the Security Council, asking for Security Council action to punish Iran and Russia for Russia taking or Iran transferring these drones to Russia. What do you think? What do you think the chances are of getting anything through the security? Matt, I'm just not going to uh, speculate on hypotheticals or get ahead of any previewed activities here.